Next up, we have Anisha Malt from IBM talking to us about an interesting journey, zero to production in 60 days. Now, it may sound like some kind of internet challenge or a horror movie title, but actually this is the reality that COVID-19 created. Anisha is a front-end developer and she will share how she built a showcase platform for the students of UAL to upload and display, display their artwork to the world. Let's get started. Welcome, Anisha. Thank you for that introduction, Anastasia. As mentioned, my name is Anisha, and I'm a full stack developer within the digital agency side of IBM. Most recently, I was technical lead on a project with the University of Arts London, which was a response to COVID-19. The response came about because usually the students of the university have a physical showcase where they can display the work that they've done over the year and a chance for them to get discovered. So if you've heard of Grayson Perry, this is where he was discovered. And for a lot of these students, it's a way into the working world um, and a way to get discovered by the art community. So we were tasked with building a virtual platform for the students to be able to upload their work, for the university to go in and curate it, give the students awards, and finally for the world to be able to see all the beautiful art that these students have done over the year. So when looking at our options, we came across Strappy because we had a really short deadline of two months and a budget and Strappy met all our requirements. Not only was it really easy to use, it was really well documented. A lot of the developers on our project hadn't heard about Strappy before the project and within the two months were able to pick it up and produce a really great site. And that's what I'd like to demo to you today. So if I head over to the University of Arts London site, you're greeted with this lovely homepage. Um, we can see different collections, which I'll get onto in a minute, but we can see the video from Grace and Perry, and we can see a page which lets us go in and see all the different artwork done by the students. So this page uh, literally just pulls in all of the students' work. So it calls Strappy and returns the first 100 projects uh, randomized and has an infinite scroll. So if we scroll down, it will load in the next 100 projects. If we click on one of these projects, we're taken to a student's project page. So if we go into the Strappy interface, we can see that these projects are come under collection types. So we can have collection types for the project, for the project pages, and for the collections you saw on the home page. This the students allowed to then fill in different parts. So they could fill in their college, their course, but what was really cool is we gave them the opportunity to fill in tags. So if we go back to the Strapi interface and go to the content type builder for a project specifically, we can see this field called tags. And what was great about this was when tagged, we could then click on one of these tags and search all the projects for the same tag. So this would then reduce, um, show us projects tagged body as well. So this student might have tagged their project with body or they might have mentioned it. So it's like a really quick way to search it. And the way we implemented this search was using Strapi's SDK for JavaScript. And it was really easy because it's just a REST API that we use, which was get entries. And we gave it the parameter for the example I gave of body. What we also had was the ability for the student to create pages within their project. So these pages, again, were a collection type within Strapi um, called project pages. A student could go in and upload different types of content. So they could upload images, they could upload PDFs, sound, um, video embeds, 3D, um, and I think that was about it. <laughs> um, so all these images uh, and content types were held within Amazon's S3 bucket. We use CloudFront to help with the rendering. However, after doing my own research, I found out that Strapi also has a really lovely Gra GraphQL playground. Um, so this, this is just their demo environment, and I've just queried one of the demo uh, content types within Strapi, which was restaurants. So as you can see, this gives us a whole list of the restaurants. So this would have been really nice as GraphQL has its own caching. However, we found that the SDK um, was pretty quick. As you saw, the search was quite speedy. And with the CloudFront um, caching system provided by Amazon, 
our need was sort of fulfilled. However, if I were to go back and do it again, definitely would use the GraphQL uh, endpoint exposed by Strapi. So we can go through the students' project pages. Uh, we can see all their lovely work. Um, and a lot of them uploaded their work in different formats. And once we reach the end, we are taken out of the project back to their project page. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about is the diff the way we did the dynamic um, loading of the different college pages. So we had about eight colleges and within each college, there were subject areas for different courses. So obviously loads of courses. And if we were to go in and create this manually, we would have been creating about 150 pages individually. What Strapi gave us was a field called slug. So it's the dynamic part of the URL. So if I go to the course collection type, you can see it has a slug, as does the college. So within React, which is what we built our front end on, we were able to use this field type to dynamically load these pages um, and route them, which saved us loads of time. So as you can see, this is the end part of the slug. But within the React, I'd like to show you how this worked. So within our router in React, we were just given the parameter of the slug and we gave this to the context provider, which was using the React Context API. And this allowed us to just display that slug really easily and create these pages straight out of the box from Strapi without us having to manually create any pages within React itself. What allowed what this also allowed was these these colleges and courses to customize their pages. So they could go into Strapi and input custom HTML content into a box um, and create their custom student work and collections quite easily. So if I go to another one of these colleges, this college might have collections for their personal students, um, which really gave them the, uh, these are the collections that really gave the power to the colleges and the courses to build their page as they wanted to. Um, we also use Storybook with React, which enabled these colleges to create custom content uh, within their pages, which was really nice. So a combination you know, of Strapi, Storybook and React is really what made all this possible within the short time frame that we had. Um, so yeah, if you, if you want to be inspired, you can click here and I was truly inspired by a lot of their work. Um, having not really understood art before this project, I can say I'm quite in awe of what a lot of these students have built for their graduation and mine was nowhere near as impressive. So yeah, that's sort of how we use Strapi. Um, definitely recommend it if you've got a project that has a short deadline and you're looking for something that's really easy to pick up and use or you know you're just looking for a headless cms for a personal project but you know they really made this all possible um and yeah thank you thank you anisha the website looks amazing excited to see that you could bring it to life in only 16 days with strapi and we are also excited to see strapi being used for such initiatives and happy to hear your positive feedback